Hello, welcome to the Monday, April 19th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. This weekend, uh, the day went a little bit more into depth uh, with decoding uh, cobalt strike traffic. Remember, he talked about this in the past, and one of the features here to remember with cobalt strike is that the traffic is not encrypted if the attacker uses the trial version of Cobalt Strike. So uh, that's sort of how you would get access to the data. But then, of course, it's still encoded. So uh, the DA walks you through some of uh, the decoding of uh, that traffic. And we have yet another significant breach that may affect your software supply chain. This time it's CodeCuff that's affected. CodeCuff makes software that checks code coverage during testing. So it's often integrated in your CI CD pipeline. According to a statement on CodeCuff's website, the attacker was able to exploit a weakness in the Docker image creation process at CodeCuff that then gave the attacker access to a bash uploader script that's often used with CodeCuff and the attacker modified the script, essentially copying data to a third party's web server. So since this tool is often integrated in your development pipeline and essentially conducts automatic tests and reports on them, any credentials that you used in your CI CD pipeline may have been at risk. A reasonable and detailed statement by CodeCuff uh, that is linked to in the show notes uh, does explain what to look for, how to check whether or not the copy of this bash uploader script that you're using is affected, and also how to fix the problem if you're running into any affected uh, bash uploader scripts. And according to the statement, if you're self-hosting CodeCuff, then you're less likely affected by this problem. Now, the statement does not include the actual location of uh, the site where the data was uploaded to uh, the IP address or hostname is redacted. But it looks like that the URL was an HTTP, not an HTTPS URL. So if you have any kind of packet logs, seek logs or the like, then maybe you can go hunting and look if you find anything that matches the partial URL that was published. And Google is yet again tweaking its uh, zero-day detail release policy somewhat. Uh, now, this has been sort of a work in progress. And of course, there has been some criticism that uh, Google is too quick in revealing some of the details. The old policy was that uh, any details were released 90 days after the vendor was notified. The new or after a patch was released. Now, the new policy policy is a little bit more tweaked towards the user of the software. Now, the vendor still has 90 days to develop a patch, but once a patch is released, there's an additional 30 days before the details are revealed. And this is supposed to basically buy people time to actually apply the patch. Now, what we have often seen, of course, is that once a patch is released, the patch itself is reverse engineered in order uh, to the Arrive details about the vulnerability. So 30 days is probably appropriate here and uh, doesn't make it any dangerous uh, compared to uh, attackers just reverse engineering the patch. It seems like lately we don't spend a week uh, with yet another sort of basic IP stack vulnerability. Well, uh, let's start this week uh, with one of these vulnerabilities. This one affects open internet, ethernet IP created by the EIP stack group and uh, the vulnerabilities being addressed in this latest update. Well, uh, there are actually four different vulnerabilities that can lead to a denial of service or uh, information leakage. And yes, this is yet again a case of an ethernet and IP stack for uh, IoT devices. 
And if after applying uh, last week's uh, Microsoft patches to Windows 10, you had DNS issues, looks like you're not alone. And the fix at this point is to enable link layer multicast uh, name resolution. It's actually enabled by default, but often disabled because it also is often leaking information about a particular host. So in particular on laptops and such uh, that you use in less trusted networks, uh, you may have disabled that. So. Uh, uh, double check and I guess for now the only fix there is is uh, to re-enable LLMNR. And well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.